Hello everyone and welcome to this video on how your camera makes a photograph. The most common problem that beginner photographers face is incorrect exposure. Now, exposure is basically just the quantity or the amount of light used to make a photograph. Here is an example of an underexposed photograph where it is just too dark. On the other side, here is an example of an overexposed photograph where the colours are just too bright. Correct exposure is where the brightness level is realistic to the actual scene. Now, let's go through the learning objectives of this tutorial. After watching this video, you have a simple understanding of the process of operations of making a digital image, the three components that make up the exposure triangle, and how each component has the ability to adjust the quantity of light to make a photograph. Now I want you to pay special attention to the areas that I'm highlighting as these are the key points I want you to take away at the end of this video. Let's begin by going through the process of operations. Let's start off with a cross section of a camera. And let's have a light source, this case being the sun. Light comes from the sun and it reflects off a subject. That reflected light passes through the camera lens through a mechanism called the aperture, which is basically just an opening. That light that passes through the aperture meets the shutter curtain, which opens for a set duration of time. The light that passes through the shutter curtain makes contact with the digital sensor. The digital sensor then computerizes and processes the light and eventually turns into a photograph. Now the aperture, the shutter speed and the ISO are the three components that make up what is known as the exposure triangle. Let's go again, the ISO, the shutter and the aperture. Now, they have two roles. One is the artistic point which influences the look and the feel of the photograph. The second is the technical part which adjusts the quantity of light to make the exposure. The quantity being the important part. And that's what we are going to focus on in this video, beginning with the aperture. The aperture is basically a controllable opening within the lens to allow light to pass through into the camera. The aperture can vary in size from narrow with a small opening to wide with a large opening. A small opening allows less light, whilst a wide opening allows more light. The aperture is stated as an F number with a large F number referring to a small opening whilst the small numbers refer to a large opening. I'm now going to explain what the aperture is in the camera by using the window as an analogy. The aperture is basically just an opening that we as the photographer can adjust the size the larger the aperture, the more light we can pass through, the narrower the aperture, the less light we can pass through. Now using the window, as you can see, the wider I open, light is allowed to pass through. I can adjust the size of the aperture by making it wider. The wider I go, more light passes through. The narrower I go, less light passes through. That is essentially what the aperture is in the lens. Now, every lens has limitations to how wide it can actually open. Now, I'm not gonna talk about that part in this particular video. All I want you to know is, the aperture is just an opening in the lens. The wider we go, more light. The narrower we go, the less light. Now I'm going to show you how I adjust and vary the size of the aperture on my camera. Each camera has their own unique way of adjusting the aperture. You need to look through your um, instruction manual to your camera to find out how you do it. For the Canon system that I use, it's basically just turning this quick dial up on top. So I have a 51.4 lens here and just going to do my best. I just want to show you how the aperture changes. So you're, looking, you're actually looking through the aperture right there at this wider setting to allow as much light as possible. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to make it narrower at its most narrow sense so you can actually see it. See that little hole there? That's the aperture. I've closed it down. Wide, narrow, wide, narrow. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Go that way. 
It's a bit high. There, it's a little bit bigger there than it's last time. And bigger still, there. And again, there. You can see it's slowly getting wider at each um, section. That's me adjusting the aperture. Each lens has this different sort of variation. Let me show you on a different camera. For this camera, I adjust it using this dial here. So every camera is different. So pressing dial here. See that? That's the aperture. Wider setting, closing it down to make less light. Smaller aperture. Let's go with smaller aperture again. Smaller again. And let's make it small. Smaller again. See that? That's the aperture. So every camera has its own unique way of adjusting the aperture. You need to look through your uh, instruction manual to find out how. And we can adjust it to how big it is. And each lens has its maximum, has a limitation to how wide it can possibly go. When you actually leave it open like that, that's actually its widest. There's an actual aperture that's actually open in there. So that's aperture and how we as a photographer can adjust it. Now we're going on stating and reading the aperture. The aperture is stated as an F number, with the smaller number being a wider opening and the larger number being a narrower opening. Now I know that sounds counterintuitive, but you just got to try and remember, the smaller the number, the wider the opening, the larger the number, the narrower the opening. So for example, f2.8, f4, f8, f11, f16, f22 are examples of different variations of the size of the aperture, with f2.8 being the wider end and f22 being the more narrower end. The shutter curtain. The second part of the exposure triangle is the shutter curtain. It is often referred to as the shutter speed because it relates to how fast the shutter opens and closes. When the shutter opens, light is allowed to pass through into the camera. Light ceases to enter as the shutter closes. The shutter speed is stated as a duration of time as a fraction of one second. The second component of the exposure triangle is the shutter speed or shutter curtain. The shutter curtain is uh, basically a set of doors which open that allows for light to pass through and as the shutter is open light is allowed to fall onto the digital sensor and then it closes to stop the light to come in contact with the digital sensor. Us as photographers we can adjust the time for how long the shutter remains open for light to fall onto and this is often referred as the shutter speed. Now the longer that the shutter remains open, more light is allowed to fall onto the sensor as opposed to the, um, the shorter amount of time that the um, shutter is open allows for less light to pass through onto the sensor. Us as photographers, we can adjust and vary the, the time that the shutter stays open. Now, the shutter speed is stated as a fraction of one second. So for example, one five hundredth of a second, one eight thousandth of a second. These are very fast shutter speeds, which allow very little amount of light relative to slower shutter speeds, such as one second, five seconds, 10 seconds, 17 seconds, or up to the minutes or even hours. So just what I want you to remember for this part of the video is the shutter speed controls the duration of the amount of time that light is allowed to fall through. Faster shutter speeds allow less amount of light. Longer shutter speeds allow more amount of light to pass through. And the shutter speed is stated as a fraction of one second. Okay, I'm now gonna show you how we as the photographer can adjust the shutter speed. Now, I don't encourage this because I've just taken the lens off the camera and now dust can get into it. But I'm using a film camera and I don't use this camera very often. And um, so I'm going to use this to show you how I can adjust the, uh, the, the shutter speed. So for this particular camera, the way that I adjust the shutter speed is very similar to the, um, different to the other ones. I'm now using onto the top dial. Now, before you first saw me on the 5D Mark III, this was actually the aperture. So each camera is different. Refer to instruction manual to find out how you do it for your particular camera. So I'm going to have a shutter speed of one one hundredth of a second. Can you see it open? It actually goes up and you can see it for a flick second. You probably can't even on this video because this is actually quite fast. I'm gonna go up to one eight thousandth of a second. 
that's quick let's i'll use a slow one so you can actually see so let's go for uh one second there it goes there it closes one second what you're actually seeing in there is actually the the back of the camera because this is a film camera but if this was a digital camera that would be the sensor being exposed for one second all right so that's me adjusting the shutter speed on um, this film camera each camera has its own way of adjusting the digital sensor or the iso is the last and third part of the exposure triangle which is basically the camera's sensors sensitivity to light sensitivity being the key word it shows you how much light is required to get the correct exposure think of the master volume control on your speakers when you have the volume up high the sound is a lot louder when the volume is low there is less sound so the lower the ISO, the less sensitivity of light. The higher the ISO, the more sensitive it is to light. The ISO is stated as a number with ISO at the front. So for example, ISO 100, ISO 200, ISO 400 are all different variations of the ISO rating. Congratulations for completing this first tutorial on how your camera works. By now, you should have a simple understanding of the process of operations for creating a digital photograph, three components of the exposure triangle, and how each component can adjust the quantity of light for your exposure. In the next tutorial, we'll talk about the exposure triangle again, but this time on the photographic reasons behind each component and how to measure for the correct exposure. For now, I encourage you to follow my YouTube channel where all these tutorials will be put onto. Follow my Facebook page for updates and any comments and messages you wish to send me with regards to this video. Follow my Instagram for my posts. Till next time, take care and I look forward to seeing you again.